And up next, Kevin is actually a creator of the infomercial making phrases like as seen on TV and why there's more, part of the actually cultural landscape. He's also a co-founding board member of the Entrepreneurs Organization and one of the original sharks on the TV show Shark Tank, because we all know, yeah? So welcome, Kevin, to the summit. Hey, Kevin Harrington, I'm excited to be here. And thanks, thanks for listening uh, to some of my uh, uh, background. In fact, I, 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 I oftentimes will say, that video you just watched was scripted by my mother, okay, because it it's only talks about all the good stuff that has happened in my entrepreneurial career. Uh, today, I'm going to share with you some of the uh, the downs that I've had. I've certainly had some great ups, but had some downs also, because that's what entrepreneurship's all about. So, uh, welcome today to the Sporty Co. Online Summit, and pleasure to be here. I just, I want to ask many of you who've have, have been uh, followers of Shark Tank or seen Shark Tank over the years. How many recognize this guy that you see right there? Uh, Mr. Wonderful, right? Kevin O'Leary. Well, I always ask, do you know why he calls himself Mr. Wonderful? Uh, there's a reason why. Because nobody else will, okay? So, uh, yeah, he's he, he is Mr. Wonderful. And uh, he certainly has been that way on Shark Tank as he's he's built his brand, though. And, and I, I don't mean... In any negative way at all, way at all. Kevin O'Leary is, is, is actually a pretty amazing guy. Uh, he's done fantastic in many of his ventures and raising capital, et cetera. But I, I want to share with you a couple things today. I want to keep this tight um, as we go through the process of sharing with you some of my entrepreneurial stories, a little bit about getting on Shark Tank, some of the challenges I ran into. And first of all, a lot of people stop me and they say, hey, how'd you get into that crazy as seen a TV business? How'd you get on Shark Tank? So we're going to go through a few of, of those things. So I want to go back to the early days when actually take a look at this slide. This is when Discovery Channel was, I was watching Discovery Channel and I just got cable TV and there was, I get to the Ch Discovery and I had all CNN and all these other channels, but Discovery had color bars on the screen literally for six hours a day. And I found out that the, the challenge with that was, was that Discovery was only an 18 hour a day network. They didn't have the funding to produce 24 hours a day of programming. So, so here I was watching Ch Discovery, all of a sudden it goes dark into the six hours and I said, I've got to find something to put on that time because I can't, just can't believe that there's not going to be anything. So I did a lot of uh, trade shows back in those days and I did the houseware shows and the hardware shows and the home shows and here it was at the Philadelphia home show. And there's a guy standing there with a crowd around him. He had a knife in his hand. He was cutting through a Coca-Cola can, through a hammer, through a pair of sneakers, through a muffler. I found out his name was Arnold Morris. but people were buying what he was selling. It was called the Ginsu knife. And this became an amazing success because we, I said to Arnold, I want to film this presentation that he was demoing this knife so powerfully and selling the Ginsu knife set that that's what we did. And the Ginsu became the world's, I call it the world's first viral video, creating a juggernaut of sales of $500 million over the next number of years. So so this is how I kind of got into infomercials, seeing these demonstrators and these pitch guys at the shows, going through knives, going taking knives through Coca-Cola cans. And I met Billy Mays and Tony Little and many of these other folks. And we took them all around the world. And so this was a, became a global business. Everywhere in the world, you saw uh, bars on the screen. We put our program. So we were in Latin America, we were in Europe, we were in Asia, we were in the Middle East. And this company actually ended up becoming a public company on the New York Stock Exchange. And I'll never forget the day when here we were and I've been ringing the bell and both on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. But this company, we went from 50 million to 100 million to 300 million to 500 million in sales. And this was a, a dollar a share twenty dollars a share kind of success so um, uh, back back in this is is the mid to late 90s and so so I, I say this is sort of the the days 
when all pre-internet, by the way, so certainly nothing to do with blockchain, right? Um, and, and we're going to talk a lot more about blockchain here in a second. But this prompted my next phone call. I got a phone call from Mark Burnett. He's like, hey, would you like to come on this new show I'm shooting called Shark Tank? And I said, Mark, what's Shark Tank all about? I've, I've never heard about it. He said, I can't tell you. You got to sign an NDA. Get out here to my office and tell you all about it. And I, I, I told my wife, I said, hey, I'm going to go see Mark Burnett. He won't tell me what it's all about, but some show he was thinking about putting me on called Shark Tank. She says, oh, I know why he won't tell you. Just think about all the things he does to those crazy people on that Survivor show. Yeah, you're going to be on Shark Tank? Well, what do you want to be on that show for? So, yeah, I'm thinking, wait, was there, are they putting people into Shark Tanks or what's going on here? So, anyway, obviously, no, it's a business show and had a lot of fun doing Shark Tank, 175 segments. And, it, and meeting Mark and all the people was fantastic. But this was a kind of a short-lived success period for me, although it lasted, you know, I say short-lived. I, I had been in this SCD TV business for, for many years, but now I was seeing magazines and newspapers and TV declining, huge declines. In fact, let's talk about television all by itself, 50% decline in television viewership over the last few years. This is brutal. And then 56 million people have actually cut the cord. So uh, now I'm the as seen on TV guy and people are running away from television. In fact, here's the worst slide of all. The line across is what we had to pay for the time and the green line are the ratings. So while the ratings plummeted, we paid the same amount with the 50% decline in ratings, the same amount we had to pay. So this was brutal for us, which it, this next slide is going to tell you exactly how I felt because here is my industry. I'm the founder of the, inf creator of the infomercial, a pioneer of As Seen in TV. We had thousands of products. We had As Seen in TV.com. We had every kind of asset, thousands of products. But what was happening, it was burning to the ground. And just not a fun place to be. I don't know how many of you ever come into your office on a Monday morning and felt like this. But, you know, in fact, look at this <laughs> forest. We may have felt like this occasionally also. So so now I had to do something. And, and the, how many of you out there are entrepreneurs that have had challenges in your business or what you got up on a Monday morning and said, wow, things have changed. It's a little different. It's tougher. So I sought some advice and some assistance to take myself to the next level because I'm, I, you know, I, I got to share something with you right now. I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on coaches, mentors, masterminds. I went to Richard Branson's Necker Island and hung out with him in this amazing mastermind. And you know what Richard said to me? He says, Kevin, you need to get into this world of blockchain okay so it's like because i said richard my business went up and now it's going down because te television viewership he says kevin you got to be checking out all the latest and the greatest because blockchain is so revolutionary ever every major financial institution is implementing blockchain and and uh, certainly they're all in the research phases but they're all going to be doing things in these arenas um and in the world of 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 crypto Many, you know, many of the trading platforms are, are doing it now, but, but think about all the industries, property, energy, healthcare, food, all the different things. So it's blockchain is here to stay because it's decentralized. There's transparency and consensus amongst all the people using it. You get smart contracts, accountability and authentication. So, um, you know, in my world, it helps eliminate knockoffs because we get knocked off so quickly because our factories sometimes are selling our product right out the back door. So, um, so, so blockchain is going to help in that area. In fact, um, if, if, if you haven't seen some of the articles out there, Inc. Magazine, Forbes, I'm, I'm getting interviewed now as I'm, I'm looking at my world of what have I been doing over the last number of years. I do fulfillment. So I'm involved with a company uh, that is is in the fulfillment side of the business in a blockchain endeavor. Sportico is an amazing thing because Sportico is 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 a, is is a talent 
procurement blockchain company. So, so why am I excited about this? Because not only is Richard Branson involved, guys like Mark Cuban, other folks all around the world, it's, it is a major thing. And so um, I say that you need to be tuning in. So let me explain. I'll give you a quick case study. Tony Little, this was the gazelle. And believe it or not, a product like the gazelle ended up topping out at over a billion dollars in sales. But I will tell you that the profit structures got a little bit crazy. Now, you know, if you haven't seen the, the, the Tony Little Gazelle, here's Tony in action on the don't, you know, the, the, the actual product. So, so let me explain just the legacy way that we did business with the Gazelle. It, it started out, I took a pitch from Tony Little, then we greenlit that pitch, then we had to do the engineering and the tooling, then we had to hire talent, and so start thinking now, Sportico, blockchain, right? Manufacturing and inventory, and then the production of the infomercial, and the fulfillment of the product, the customer service, the retail distribution, the international distribution, but then came the knockoff. So this was the old way. And there was many millions of dollars in this legacy method of inefficiencies and knockoffs and broken contracts and mismatched data, lost shipments, um, the right talent sometimes maybe not getting paid. So this is why I say that when you're on fire, like we were with the SC and the TV logo, right? You need to embrace digital disruption and blockchain. And who better to listen to than somebody as smart as, as a Richard Branson. So, so let me just show you a slide that'll kind of summarize, you know, kind of how fast the world is moving. It took radio 38 years to get to 50 million listeners, TV 13, internet four years, iPod three, Facebook two, but the Pokemon Go got to 50 million downloads in 15 days. And here's the biggest one of all, Ed Sheeran got to 375 million downloads in one week. So this is where I asked the question, do you think the world's moving a little faster today than it was in the old days, right? And I, when I talk old days, I'm talking five years ago. So, so this is why blockchain is so important because I've spent billions of dollars on production, on talent, on filming, on fulfillment, on media, on contracts, but now I'm getting involved with many different kinds of companies, Sportico, Digits for Processing, Ship Chain for Fulfillment, Shark, Shark, Smart Chain Media, for um, actually production of, of projects and, and videos and, and pitch investors live is another company where we're taking pitches on the internet. So, so I've taken literally my 40 years of experience in the world of legacy kinds of things where when I mentioned the Tony Little Lab um, uh, Gazelle product, for example, and now transitioning to blockchain with companies like Sportico and like I mentioned, ShipChain, where we take pitches via blockchain and we invest via blockchain and we sign smart contracts, we hire talent via Sportico and we produce shows via smart chain media, manufacturing, fulfilling, etc. By the way, global distribution also, and this is how all these this talent's gonna make lots of money. So why, why Sportico? And this is obviously one of the reasons why we're here today. So I've made 40 years of investments. Um, and when you think about the sports, it's a, it's a 600 plus billion dollar industry. And it's, it's been a lifelong passion of mine being involved in the sports industry and all of the money that I've lost over the years with some of the poor investment information, some of these the contracts that were broken because they weren't smart contracts, this high barrier of entry in many cases, high risk, low reward, blockchain is clearly the solution. So uh, ShipChain has done amazing things. We, 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 we've taken one of the former heads of DHL who's now running ship chain and and they're they're in europe the middle east latin america eastern europe i lost tens of millions of dollars over the years and in, in money and you know sort of under the table deals corruption lost shipments um major inefficiencies and and broken uh, contracts so blockchain again was that solution so a uh, dhl endorsed actually the need for um for having some kind of a blockchain solution and, and they've said ship chain is a solution as they've recognized ship chain. So this is pretty, pretty powerful stuff. So I always like to, to say 
you know, when I get involved in investments, where are we on the bell-shaped curve of, of the evolution of the industry? Now, the evolution of infomercials, I got involved at the beginning as the creator and inventor of infomercials, and that was back in the early 80s. But now, in the, in the 2000s, it peaked, and now as we're hitting 2018, 2019, coming up next year, we're in the back end of infomercials, but blockchain and technology were at the very beginning of the opportunity for blockchain. So now is the time to act. And I say that those that get in on the ground floor have a, you know, a, a, an opportunity to get in on a new, bottle, a new model of business and to be able to have these unbelievably unique qualities of blockchain in your business where it's decentralized, transparent, there's a consensus of all the people participating, you're using smart contracts, it's accountable, and it's authenticated. And again, helping eliminate those knockoffs. So giving you instant global connectivity. So I think what we're talking about is the, is the value of everything is that we create here resides in the hands of many rather than a few. So um, I think one of the guys that said it best is Buckminster Fuller says, you, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, you gotta build a new model. And this is what makes the existing model obsolete. So it makes total sense for me. And I think that's why many of us that are exploring the world of blockchain understand this. We're in on the ground floor. And again, I just wanna thank each and every one of you for being here and being part of our, our online presentation. Uh, it's a few minutes out of your day to understand my perspective as an original shark, as the inventor of the infomercial. I'm excited to say that I'm all in for blockchain. Uh, Sporty Co. is an amazing company. And I just, I'm gonna give you the last four words from a, a friend of mine and a mentor to me also, Tony Little. Thank you, Kevin. Don't go away yet. I have a couple of questions for your, uh, from our uh, viewers, actually. What would you say, which industries other than sports will benefit most from the blockchain technology, by your opinion? So that, that's a great question about what other industries do I see blockchain uh, becoming powerful in. And I think, uh, let me just summarize this. In my world over the last 35 years, I have taken a lot of pitches. Uh, and, and so that, that's an area that blockchain is going to be providing documented pitching structures. Uh, that, this is Pitch Investors Live is a company that, that does that kind of thing. So I take pitches that will be documented by blockchain with videos and statements of fact and smart contracts then with the people that have products. We also are then manufacturing Good. So there's going to be blockchain on the manufacturing side of things. Then there's the fulfillment side of things. And this is ship chain is a, is a great example of that. Former DHL folks that are going to be able to provide authentication and documentation of the origins of the product and all of the, the channels of distribution as that product is, comes from the factory into warehouses in the U.S. and then gets shipped to the ultimate consumer. So, so you've got... Um, pitch taking, you've got manufacturing, you've got uh, fulfillment, you're going to have distribution into retail stores, you're going to have, t uh, obviously, as we all know, talent, and um, um, uh, Sporty Co. Is, is an amazing side of, of being able to find and get financing for, for major talent. We also got processing of the credit cards, and this is a company uh, called Digits that we're involved with. So um, as I keep going, insurance is another one that's, that's, that's coming out very shortly. There's also another one called Smart Chain Media uh, that uh, I'm, I'm involved with that has um, blockchain for production. And all of the dollars that get thrown into production, I've spent literally tens of millions probably hundreds of millions when it's all said and done on all the different productions that we've done in the hundreds and hundreds of projects. Um, and so production is very powerful in, in terms of having a blockchain component to it to be able to make sure uh, that things are, are happening in, in, the, in a proper fashion. So um, I think we've kind of covered a bunch. I'm sure there's a few that we missed, but uh, every aspect of, of, of my end of the business, you know, another one is media. That's another one. Uh, you know, customer service, et cetera. But 
I, I think you know banking has always been a big one, and and um, and so finance, fintech, big areas to be looking at blockchain in the near future. You're also an advisor and co-owner of Sportico, who is hosting today's event. A question everybody is eager to hear you answer, of course, is where do you see Sportico, let's say, in a year? Great question, where, where I see Sportico in a year. So, look, nobody has that crystal ball, but um, we always like to make projections and, and plans for the future. And as entrepreneurs, um, I'm very passionate about the projects that I get involved with. And, and, and I, I like to be thinking very positively about where these uh, ventures can go. And Sportico is, is, a, is, is significant out there in the marketplace because one of the things that I've been dealing with for so many years that have made so much success for me is amazing talent. So I'm, I'm talking about people like Tony Little and Jack LaLanne and uh, Billy Mays. I mean, Billy Mays was, was just a, a local guy from Pittsburgh that was selling automotive products. And we grabbed him out of the fairs and, and created, you know, a huge business out of his uh, 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 pitching abilities, right? And, and Tony Little, we did well over a billion dollars in sales with, with Tony. So make a long story short, though, Sportico is going to be the go-to place where talent is able to arrange some financing and meeting with sports organizations and clubs and, and, and all of it kind of coming together in, in a big way. So I just believe that it, it's time for a, a, a company like Sportico to be able to allow the whole industry of sports from the talent side um, in almost like a crowdfunding kind of a scenario, uh, provide some financing to then allow them to connect in with the right sports people, sports marketing, and, and clubs, et cetera, across the board as the go-to place. Sportico, that's what I'm hoping. Thank you, Kevin. It was a pleasure to have you with us.